This is going to be a little bit of a theory video that catches you up on kind of what we've actually set up so far. Like, now you have a running Kubernetes cluster. Like, what the heck is that? And maybe more importantly, uh, what's it made of and what do those things do? <laughs> so, there are not a lot of great diagrams out there, uh, certainly not many great up-to-date ones for Kubernetes. I may kind of refilm this video at some point um, to keep it up to date and to maybe get some better graphics in here, but it's, it's the concepts that count, so just bear with me here. So a Kubernetes cluster consists of a master, which is doing Kubernetes specific things, and then a bunch of nodes, which apart from doing some Kubernetes things, are actually running the workloads that you're scheduling on this cluster, right? So the end goal really is just, you have some work, you define that work in config files, maybe it's running a web app, maybe it's you know running some jobs, some batch jobs, whatever it is. And the job of this system is to get that scheduled the way you want reliably across your compute resources. So we're gonna talk about each of these components in turn. Uh, the master, has actually <laughs> this is a massive oversimplification but that's actually perfect for what we want we're going to talk about the api server that is the service you've actually been talking to using kubectl so when you're like hey kubectl get nodes that application that binary actually reaches out hits the kubernetes api and asks hey like tell me about your node list um and this api server has access to kind of the state of the system and gives you the information you need or say if you're submitting um, a new Kubernetes object, which we'll be doing later, like some work, you also kind of do that through this API server. So this is what talks to you through a, an HTTP API. The scheduler is probably like the core concept of Kubernetes, right? It's like you give it some work and it schedules that work. Uh, in many ways, the scheduler is a bin packing algorithm, which is like the bins are the kind of space you have is your nodes, how much computing power is on those nodes, like how much RAM they have, how many CPUs, um, that looks at how much computing power you have and how much each of your jobs needs. Um, we'll just start calling them pods. These pods are basically the unit of, of work being done on the system. Um, We'll, we'll get much further into them in the next video, but uh, for now, just the pods and the work that the cluster is doing, the actual like web application or whatever you're scheduling on there. But for this for this video, that's the same thing. So the scheduler's job is just matching the resources that the pods need. Let's say it's an nginx server that you're running in a pod, and it needs like a gig of RAM, and uh, you expect maybe like four gigahertz of computing power. Well, the scheduler, you know, you put that, you make sure that you're your work is defined in that way uh, in its config file saying, hey, I need these resources. And then the scheduler respects that and only schedules it on a node that has that available compute uh, power available or RAM available. So that's keeping it as simple as possible and introducing the least amount of new concepts possible. That's what the scheduler is doing. It's just matching the work you've got against the resources you've got and kind of binding those together, being like, oh, I can schedule this work on node one or node two. Okay. Then we've got the controller manager, and we're not gonna get super deep into this because it's just not that important that you know how this is broken up inside of Kubernetes. But basically, this is what gives you the, the nice features of Kubernetes uh, that you've come to expect from a container scheduling or uh, container orchestration system. The controller manager contains other services that do things, uh, well, I'll just go through them real quick. There's four of them. There's the node controller, which is like, hey, are my nodes actually healthy and able to do work? Um, there's the replication controller, which is say you've got an Nginx job, you want two of them scheduled so that you're highly available. And the replication controller is checking like, hey, do we have like the correct number of this running that Dave wants? Like he wanted two Nginx, Nginx is running, did a node die? Did something happen? Like, if so, do I need to schedule any more of these or are we good right now? Uh, the third one is the endpoints controller, which actually um, is kind of how you expose your workloads to the outside world. This gets into like the, the service discovery world. And then you have a security controller in here, a security manager, uh, which is managing access, managing like namespaces, 
but we're actually not going to get into that at all in this course. So that's kind of what's going on, and that, that covers the uh, what's going on in the master, except for etcd, which is, um, like, logically, this this shouldn't be in this diagram because it's a t it completely abstracted over in... Uh, but etcd is just a data store. It's a, it's a simple key value store. It's the back end that Kubernetes uses uh, to store a bunch of the state that it manages about the system. Uh, but it's actually irrelevant for this. If you were if we were setting up a Kubernetes master ourselves, like you would have to set up etcd as, as a service, like as one of the many, many services that makes up Kubernetes that you would actually have to set up, run, maintain, upgrade separately. Uh, but in the case of our videos, like we're not self-hosting this thing, so we're letting DigitalOcean do that for us, uh, and you do not need to worry about etcd at all. The Kubernetes nodes are actually really simple, uh, at least for the stuff that we care about for this course. There's really only two things running on there that you need to, to know about aside from the actual workloads or pods. The kubelet daemon, which is just a process that's running on there, an agent that's running, uh, that talks to the Kubernetes master to kind of get instructions for what should be running there. That's what actually makes sure that containers for the actual stuff you want running have been scheduled. So if you have a pod that should be running Nginx, like our previous example, uh, well, Kubelet's the thing that's like, hey, have I actually scheduled a Docker or Rocket or Run C container running Nginx? Like, if no, I need to do that to make sure that this pod is, is the way it should be. Um, so that's actually the nitty gritty of, of running stuff on a node. The other component is kube proxy. We're not gonna get basically at all into that during this course uh, because that opens up the massive Kubernetes networking can of worms. Uh, kube proxy handles the well, proxying, masquerading, forwarding, uh, basically the massive amounts of IP tables magic and lots and lots of rules that has to happen for all of this to work, uh, not just for everything to be able to talk to each other, uh, the way that you expect for this kind of logical model of how things work, but also to make all of the isolation stuff work to make sure that, uh, you know, two workloads, two separate pods on a node can't talk to each other and to kind of enforce all of the, the security guarantees that Kubernetes tries to give you. So Kube proxy, think networking, Kubelet is the thing that's actually like, I don't want to say scheduling because I don't want to overload that term, but that's the thing that's actually running things on the node itself. Like, our container's running. Well, Kubelet did that. Kubelet talked to the Docker API on there or the, you know, the rocket runtime to get some containers running. So uh, after this, we're going to dive into uh, the actual workloads themselves, the pods, and, and all the other kind of Kubernetes ideas that make up a running application on the Kubernetes platform. So uh, this is all the theory for now, and I'll see you in the next one. That's actually not true at all. No, there's much more theory coming, but <laughs> we'll save it for the next video. All right, we'll see you there. Peace.